Accessible videos on your WordPress website, presented by Sumner Davenport, Alicab 2021. We'd like to thank our gold sponsors Telstra and Intopia, our silver sponsors ANZ and Coles, and our bronze sponsor HowTo. Hello and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you wherever you are around the globe. My name is Sumner Davenport. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a specialist in web accessibility. And I'm coming to you virtually today from Southern California, USA. I describe myself as a person with fair skin, blue eyes behind my violet reading glasses, and I have red hair and the personality to go with it. I have been designing and remediating WordPress sites to accessibility standards for over 12 years. Today, I'm going to be talking with you about accessible videos on your WordPress website. These slides are available at bit.ly forward slash a11y dash s-u-m-n-e-r. I'd like to start with a question. What do you think you can do to make a video accessible? The answer I ordinarily get from this question is captions. We need to put captions on a video so it makes it accessible to a person who is deaf. Where someone says, well, we need to add a transcript so it makes it accessible to a person who is deaf. And so my follow-up question is, are we only concerned about one disability? Are we only making videos accessible to limited people or limited groups of people? What about people who are blind and have low vision or persons with cognitive disabilities or a person whose primary or secondary language is different from the one that's on the video? How about people with brain injuries or reading disabilities, people with motor disabilities, and those that are prone to seizures? Can we make videos that are accessible for them as well? I believe the answer is yes. But let's go back for a second and talk about the one comment that most people make, and that is about captions. And we'll talk first about auto captions. On the screen is the universal sign with the red circle with the line that goes through the middle of it, and the word auto captions is behind that line. This is the universal symbol for don't or stop. And that is because auto captions are never correct. Auto captions have missing words. They have words that shouldn't be there, and they are missing sentences. They have words that are misspelled. They have misinterpretation. They're very much incorrect. They are generated automatically by artificial intelligence, and they are not adequate for captioning videos so that a person that relies upon captions actually is getting the benefit of them. Auto captions are generated when you upload a video to YouTube. They then create what is called an SRT file. It's a sub-rip subtitle file. In this SRT file, there are three things that are standard format in all SRT files. One is the number of the frame. Every frame within that video has a number. The other is the start and stop time, the duration of that frame, how long is it visible, and the captions. These three items are on all SRT files as standard format. But what I have on the screen here, besides listing those three points, is a screenshot of automatic captions that were generated on a YouTube video. And I'd like to read them to you right now. It's reality jarred to ball life, child rock and stay health, but equal you importing to fun and real tiv. I work in open Stores now, but a mod skate key ought the core. Did you understand that? I certainly didn't, and I'm the one that pulled that file off of YouTube. Well, I took the time to take that file and correct those captions to what they should have read. What it should have said was, it's really hard to balance life, children work, and stay healthy but equally important to include fun and relaxation. I work in open source now, 
that I'm an escapee of the corporate. Vast difference between the auto-generated captions and the quality captions once it's been corrected. So when you rely upon the auto-generated captions, you are not providing an accessible video. I know a number of people that say, well, it's better than nothing. And I tend to disagree strongly with that. I was watching a video with a friend about a week ago, and I kept stopping the video to explain to her what was going on and the conversations that were taking place because the automatic captions were so poor, there was no way for her to be able to follow the video without my giving additional explanation. We finally both gave up on watching the video because it wasn't fun for her not to be able to read it on her own and know what was going on. And it wasn't fun for me because she wasn't having any fun. So quality captions are what you want to aim for. So when I say that automatic captions are a start, not a finish, what can you do with automatic captions? My recommendation is you edit them and make them quality captions. And how do you do that? There are caption editors. You can be in your account on YouTube, in the YouTube studio, and open up a video and open up the subtitle or the caption area. And you can manually edit word by word, line by line, minute by minute. It's quite tedious and it will take you quite some time. So I prefer a website called Downsub, D-O-W-N-S-U-B dot com. And you can take the URL from YouTube and you can put it into Downsub. And Downsub will allow you to download a SRT file or a text file. And the captions, although they're auto-generated, seem to be a lot better than the ones from YouTube. So I prefer Downsub to then I'm doing less editing when I do it that way. My favorite editor for captioning is something called the Subtitle Edit. It is open source and available on GitHub. On the screen, I have a screenshot of Subtitle Edit program, and I will describe it to you the best I can. The subtitle edit program has three separate areas. The first area is where you have the captions that you have uploaded the SRT file through subtitle edit, and it is now given an incomplete stream on the screen of your subtitles or your captions. It has the start time, the end time, the duration, and the actual text, just what you saw in the SRT file. It also shows how many words are in each line of captioning. This particular program allows you to merge lines that are too short or to break lines that are too long. At the same time, while you're editing the captions, it is showing on the video that is on display to the right on the subtitle edit program. So you can see exactly what's happening in real time to your captions but you're not interfering with the video that might still be on YouTube. You're only editing the captions here in this program. And then it also has a waveform where you can listen to the waveform or you can watch it. So if you want to edit by listening, you can edit using the waveform. There are a number of controls within this program that you can use. I use it to clean up a caption file. And it is very efficient. The quality captions do not obscure anything important on your screen. So when you're creating a video, you want to make sure that that bottom portion, the one third or one quarter of your screen is left available for that caption to be there, for the black background and the white text to be able to not be covering up anything that's important on your screen. You want your captions to be all the words that are spoken by the characters. And there is a little bit of discussion on this one because you have people, and I am one also, that occasionally says, um, and ah, and uh, you know, and uh, yeah. And that in part of the conversation, there is one group that says, take it all out. And there's another group that says, leave some of it in. So if you take all of those words out, you may end up with a frame where the lips are moving, but there's no caption. And that's very confusing, especially to someone with a cognitive disability to 
to want to know what's going on. If you leave in some of the ums and the ahs and the false starts, it also has character and personality. And now the person reading those captions gets a bit of personality from the person that is speaking. It's not just dry words anymore. Captions should be a mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters, just like in a, in a document or in a book that you would read. The punctuation should follow the standard style of the language that is being spoken in the video. And if there is absolutely nothing being spoken, if the person has pondered for silence for a moment, then you can use the ellipsis, those nice three dots, and place that in where the captions would be. And then the person reading the caption knows they're not missing out on something. Nothing's being said. The best captions are those with one or two lines, up to 60 characters total, but a maximum of 32 characters per line. You don't want one line of 60 characters, but having two lines that total 60 characters and having that consistent on each frame of your video makes it very comfortable for someone to be reading. It has a nice flow to it, and it then does not interfere with the readability. If it's too long or if you have captions that take up the full width of your screen, if someone has macular degeneration or they have a loss of focus of their vision where they're looking through the tiniest periscope of an area, they have to read the one section at a time. And they may sometimes, if the screen is large enough, have to move their head like I am doing now, like they're reading from one side of the screen to the other to read your captions. And that can be exhausting to constantly be moving the head or the body from one side of the screen to the other. Whereas if the captions are all in the lower center portion of your screen and they are approximately 32 characters per line and two lines, it's easier for someone to be able to read within that section. You need to remember to identify anyone that is speaking and that includes people that are off the screen. So that if there are captions on the screen, but the face that is being seen on the screen, the lips aren't moving, you need to identify that that was someone else. And you can do that by putting that person's name in brackets. If you have more than one speaker, all speakers get to be identified. It's also important that if you have multiple speakers on screen at the same time to identify whose captions belong to which person. And that's why putting the name in round brackets is so important. Any sound effects that impact what's happening on the screen is important to include. But if I suddenly look away because my dog was making noise and then I look back like I just now did, the person that's reading those captions is going to wonder, why did I do that? But if it says in brackets, dog barking, that person has just been included into everything that is taking place. If there is a song that is playing on the video and there are lyrics that can be heard, they should be captioned. If there are no lyrics, then there should be a musical icon. So now you've cleaned up your captions, you've cleaned up your SRT file, so you have quality captions. Well, then how do you get that embedded into your WordPress website? You need a special player. And on the screen, I have listed my two favorites. One of them is the Able Player, and the other is called Player, spelled P-L-Y-R. Both are available on GitHub, and both are available on the WordPress repository plugins. I prefer the Able Player, and I will tell you why. There is a screenshot on right now on the screen of the Able Player, and I will do my best to describe it fully. On the left side, there is an image of a computer tablet screen, and there is a Braille keyboard attached with a person's fingers on the Braille keyboard. Under that picture are the captions, and under that are the controls. And these controls have universally known icons. There is the play and the stop, the rewind, the fast forward, the fast rewind, the closed captions. Now, Able Player also allows for additional descriptions. There is a description control. There is a transcript. 
if you have a video that has chapters, Able Player allows for chapters to be displayed. This particular control panel has a rabbit for making the video go faster and a little turtle if you want it to go slow. There is additional control. To the right of the universal control is the transcription section. At the top, there is a click box for auto scroll or not. And there's also a language selector. Able Player is available in 13 languages. So in the transcription section, what is being shown on the screen of the video is also highlighted in the transcript. So it makes it easier for someone to be able to follow along and not get lost. On this particular screenshot, there is also an additional box. This is part of the description that can be added to a video. This is readable by a screen reader. So if someone using a screen reader wants a better description of the visual, not the audio, but the visual of this particular video, that's where the description comes in. And now persons with screen readers are able to get a more inclusive experience of this video. And this is one of the reasons, or a lot of the reasons, why I like the Able Player. The Able Player interface also provides a user interface that configures the default options through your WordPress dashboard or through your WordPress install. There's an interface directly with the media libraries within your WordPress. Able Player supports audio and video. So you can use the Able Player for podcasts and make podcasts more accessible. It supports both closed captions and subtitles. So persons that are watching a video that need subtitles, this is something that the Able Player can provide. The audio description is available in two ways. It's a described version of video, and it's a text-based description that is announced by screen readers. And the player, the person that is playing the video, can control to show them or not show them. The Able Player's accessibility features include so many things. It features a high contrast. So if the person playing the video has high contrast on their computer, the player will support that. And the controls are scalable. So if someone has zoomed so or that page so that they can see the video, those controls are going to be scalable to that zoom and a reflow appropriately. It is keyboard accessible and it has a focus indicator so the keyboard user knows exactly where they are. Everything is properly labeled for screen reader users, so you don't have to add any more of your own code to do that. It's controllable by speech recognition users. It has another option that you can move and resize the transcript window. There are several speed and rewind controls. So it also gives those options for people that need to rewind fast or slow so that they can find what they need to hear again or see again for their comprehension. It displays the captions below the video. So it doesn't take up any of the video room at all. And there are several other controls that it allows for the person that is playing the video that makes it that much more accessible. So what's next for you? You have a video. You have cleaned up the captions or the subtitles. You have added additional descriptions. And now what do you do? You upload to YouTube your video. You upload the correct caption file. You install the Able Player on your WordPress site. You customize the features. You can either use HTML code in the block or you can use a short code to add the, U, the URL from YouTube and publish. Now you have an accessible video on your WordPress website. It's that easy. Alleycamp 2021.